Now, he did lie to cover this up, which is pretty bad. You know, it, it just kind of gives some shades of Anthony Fauci. Like, once you, once you lie to us, and then you say, hey, trust me, you know, I'm a scientist. It's like, well, but you lied, so I don't trust you. Hi, my name's John Jaquish. I'm a doctor of biomedical engineering, which gives me a unique perspective beyond many YouTube influencers. So today, I would like to encourage anyone who's interested to read my PhD dissertation. The reason is, uh, recently, there has been some controversy over, I won't mention names, but you guys will probably be able to figure out who this is. Uh, you know, somebody had their dissertation reviewed by some others, and it was a guy with millions and millions of followers. And it turns out his dissertation is pretty bad. I think there was over 200 errors. There were whole sections that were just duplicate, you know, copy and paste, which just inflates the size of the document. Clearly adds nothing, looks more like a mistake. And then the entire conclusion was, I think, like bigger, bigger muscles are stronger muscles, which is something that was established in science decades before. I don't believe it's the most fair thing to do to judge somebody's quality as a scientist just on their dissertation. Because remember, you do your dissertation when you're a new scientist. It's the first thing. It's sort of like your training paper. And there's a reason why they want it to be exhaustive. These, these papers have to be very detailed. Uh, there are often hundreds of pages. And the reason for that is you want the individual to understand what academic rigor is and be able to produce an example of creating that level of rigor in their own analysis so that all variables are considered so that one can learn to communicate on on that level with other scientists so it's a training exercise so the fact that this guy i'm talking about he didn't have a great dissertation i mean the fact that he had a bad dissertation is honestly more of a poor reflection of the university than anything. Not him, I mean, if a student gets hands in a bad paper and gets an A for it, good for the student. I mean, that's just, that's, that's academia. So yeah, I don't think he should be blamed. Now he did lie to cover this up, which is pretty bad. So like, you know, it, it just kind of gives some shades of Anthony Fauci. Like once you, once you lie to us, and then you say, hey, trust me, you know, I'm a scientist. It's like, well, but you lied, so I don't trust you. So uh, that's too bad. But I will say that if you read my dissertation, you'll probably be impressed. If not, you won't find blistering mistakes or, or wonder why the document was created in the first place. Uh, it, it's, uh, the dissertation is on my website, drj.com, D-O-C-T-O-R, the letter J dot com and you can download it right there uh, go ahead and give it a read I don't think it's the most exciting document because as I said these things are required to be very exhaustive in detail and for what I was studying it was uh, bone loading in the postmenopausal population and in the adaptations that come from loading of the bone so this was um, an analysis looking at how we can get the proper strategy for loading of long bones of the body. So loading on its axis, uh, so end to end, if we're talking about my, my uh, humors. You take all those things into consideration and put together the best analysis, try and think of all the possible variables, all the questions that could be asked and address them also. Uh, and I do this, I learned this from my PhD advisor who told me always lead with the weaknesses of the data. Explain what you don't have before you explain what you have. Because that way, if you start off that way, you can't be accused of hiding those weaknesses. You open with the weaknesses. It gives nobody, it, it, like you take all of your, the people who showed up with pitchforks and torches to come after you, you kind of take their weapons away from them. Like, oh, well, he just, he just admitted the thing I was gonna bring up, so it's like I can't really bring anything up now. And that's just a better way to be because you're, it, it's accuracy. It's, you're just 
delivering here's the information we have and here's what we can get out of that information and you know if there's data to the contrary you must explain there's data to the contrary and potentially theorize why there's data to the contrary or there are tests that are being run on the same subject and different outcomes exist you can definitely theorize why that is but you have to acknowledge if there are two sides to an argument that there are two sides to an argument you'll be able to see that and uh, understand my dissertation also if you happen to do this and it is a very long document i think it's 250 pages when you read this thing you will probably understand why i was driven towards the louis simmons approach to variable resistance because everything i discovered showed amazing things about loading the body in the strongest position so like here, like when I'm in this position, back of the hand in line with the clavicle, 120 degree angle from upper to lower arm, I can either produce or absorb the greatest amount of force in this specific position. So the research goes on to identify the positions that we naturally absorb impact in a fall. Those are the highest levels of loading that come into the body. And so we look at these different positions, which are typically documented in gymnastics because gymnastics is a very repeatable activity. So the process of dismount from the uneven bars, which is the greatest level of loading that will go through the hip joint, this sometimes enables people to achieve 10 times their body weight in loading through that joint and that musculature. The, the world record squat, last I checked, was right around four times body weight. Uh, and also the minimum dose response for stimulating bone density growth in the hip is 4.2 multiples of body weight. So the, the world record in the heavyweight category doesn't even exceed the minimum dose for bone loading. But of course, I happen to know the individual I'm talking about, uh, his name is Matt Wenning, at a 300 pound body weight, he had a 1200 pound squat. He's done a DEXA scan, he does not have low bone density, even though he doesn't achieve that peak loading in his squat. So where is he getting it? Well, he's getting it from high impact, but what my dissertation was about was creating the loading events in a safe and controlled manner. So by very short range type exercise that really just focus on getting as much force through the joint when it's at that optimized 120 degree angle position, and that geometry is echoed all throughout the body. I think if you bother to give it a read, you'll like it. Uh, make sure to ask me any questions about it in the comments and I'll see you on the next one. If this video helped you, I want you to subscribe and follow. I'm going to put out videos on a regular basis. I think they're going to help a whole lot of people, especially if you're one of those people that doesn't just instantly grow from lifting regular weights. We've got the answer for you.